going at the same time. OK, so the bottom line is I just want to let everybody know that um, I am here to help you 24 seven. OK, um, this course can be an intense course because it, it takes allocation of energy. Now, a lot of people will tell you, well, it's time management. No such thing. <laughs> right. We say, well, you know what? After I get done with work, I put the kids to bed. I did all this. OK, it's nine. It's nine thirty at night and I'm ready to go. And no, you're not because I know I'm not because I'm done. Like, you know, I'm, I'm hitting the PlayStation and whatnot. I just, I'm fried. Cognitively, I'm toast. So what do you do for work, right? You, and then what's your quality work? What's your quality? It's about energy when you have it. That's the best way to do that. And I do a lot of coaching and career counseling and coaching and that type of thing. And a lot of people think it's that, that, you know, they find the right time. No, it's when you have the cerebral energy to apply for 15 to 20 minutes to a half an hour tops. OK, so this is kind of just a little coaching sidebar here that, you know, how people we've all done it. I crammed. I did, worked on this for four hours and I have no idea what I did. <laughs> right. Or I have no idea what I've read. The brain doesn't work that way. The brain works in bursts and then you will reward yourself and that type of thing. So just little strategies for success. OK, relative to because you're all busy people, you have a lot of demands on your time, et cetera. Right. And 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 you're tired. There's no question about it. You know, you, you're not you're not kids anymore. You know, you're fully you're adults and you have a lot of responsibilities. And Jerry, welcome to CJ 480, the Capstone. I'm your wonderful host, Dr. Jeff Zarnick. You can call me Dr. C, call me Jeff, call. Hey, you. It doesn't matter. But I also want you guys to know that in my bio is my cell phone number. Not not the hard line number to the college or the university. Call me anytime, seven days a week on this. Right. So it's in there. And I mean that seven days a week. Don't go. Oh, I'm going to bother. You're not bothering me. I work for you. OK, I mean that. See, I know what it's like to go on a course and not have any help. OK, or be stressed out or not hear from your instructor for a couple two, three days. And you're like, wait a minute, your life doesn't stop. Since I don't have a life, I'm happy to help you. <laughs> all right. But I want you also to have fun with the course. All right. And everyone is going to do something a little bit different. So, Jerry, where are you, sir? Where were you located? Uh, I'm in New Braunfels, Texas. Oh, you, well, we got, we're all over the country here. Well, welcome to the course, Jerry, and congratulations. You have come sliding at the home plate. No, sorry, baseball metaphor. Um, and you're here. And again, I'm here to back you up. So my recommendations for everybody, and we'll get the Q&A and all that sort of thing, is my recommendations is to ask questions as you go, stay in contact with me, and anything you need, let me know. I work with you individually, okay? So what I do is I have a writing center policy, all right? Now, I'm sure you're all great writers, et cetera, but writing for research is a very different beast. You're writing in a scholarly fashion, and you've got to keep it simple and focused so people reading it, your audience, who have no idea what you're talking about will be convinced that the problem you're investigating actually exists. That's it. Are you going to complete a, comp a full blown research report? Probably not. OK, my goal is to help you understand the skeletal framework of research. If you decide, Emily, <laughs> if you decide to go on for your graduate studies, all right? And a lot of students that I've dealt with over the years have gone on because the way this course runs and the way I run it, I'll be honest with you, I'm not blowing my horn. I just understand how hard it can be in a short amount of time to try to put together a, a bang up job on a research report. Are you kidding? No, it's about the framework. It's about developing and identifying and isolating a problem and keeping it focused and simple. And a lot of students, I'll you know, say, well, I, you know, I ask them, well, what do you want to study? I want to study the drug problem in the United States of America. And I say, call me back in 10 years because that is just way too big. And research can get way out of hand, right? Your, your research is about a sliver. You're adding a sliver of information that you find to a larger body of knowledge. That's it. You're not here to cure a giant problem. Now, it's problems that in our own schema that drives us to that. OK, that we have this investigative mind, a curious mind is the sign of high intelligence. It is. And that's fact. That's not the world according to me. So it's about investigative curiosity and then be able to take that problem. OK, and articulate what's actually happening and what would you propose to do to fix it? That's it. OK, that's it. Now, I say that's it, but I don't want to oversimplify it. I do want to keep it simple, though. Kind of crazy, right? Part of the package here is reading. 
reading for research, which can be at times boring, right? Especially if you're looking for that kind of information quickly that can contribute to what you're trying to say. That's hard. That's your literature review. There are different ways and methods of doing that. Okay. We, the, you, you've been here long enough to know the Shapiro Library is phenomenal. But if you get stuck, all right, I'm here to help you. So let's go back to the problem, the problem itself, the problem statement or the, well, the issue statement, problem statement, whatever it is. Okay. So let, let me, um, by a show of hands, let me just say, um, Sean, what are you looking to investigate? Um, my subject matter, matter expert and I are going to be investigating active shooter countermeasures for uh, educational institutions, schools, and houses of worship. Okay. Specifically because he is actually a, in the Sheriff's Department in uh, Sheriff's right. Department in Colorado. Okay, yes, yes. One uh, Scott Southard, right? That's right. Great, great. I'm glad I'm glad he's leading you through 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 that. That's great. When you actually sit down to write the problem statement out or issue statement, Sean. I recommend this, and I tell this to everybody. Send it to me in an email. And why, what I'll do is, as I'm your editor and supporter and all that, I will help you refine it so it doesn't grow out of control on you because it, it can. You know, and I've I, I've seen some wonderful research projects or research proposals. Bless you. Re it's really coming. It's really about a research proposal. To be honest with you. All right. Some people have completed it in eight weeks. Uh, it's a lot, but just think proposal. But if you can craft a sharp, pointed, and accurate and effective problem statement, the rest will fall into place. Okay. That's my job because one word, literally one word in your problem statement, can send the whole thing flying. OK, just all of a sudden you're down a rabbit hole in a research or in the library. Go, oh, my God, there's just so much. How do we refine that? That's my job. OK, I'll give you an example. When I was doing my let me close my door. The great days of barking at mosquitoes or something. <laughs> all right. Anyway, so. So my job is to help you refine it so it doesn't grow out of control. That's the biggest part, all right? Because that creates so much stress. You know, which way are you going? I can help you with the literature. I can help you with the research if you need it, all right? But like I said, my job is to try to help you narrow that down to reduce your stress and so you can just move forward with this thing and leave the course confident that if you decide to go into graduate work or somebody wherever you're employed says, hey, can you do me do us a favor? Find out why this is happening. Right. I mean, our world is a cause and effect model. Something happened and we, our job is to know why. And our job is to really dig deep and not just isolate it to one particular supposed causal factor or another. We develop theories based upon what we believe to be those causal factors. And for research, we want to try to really do what we can to isolate it to one causal factor. OK, that you can make recommendations to address. That's critical. Um, so as an example, um, I, I did my dissertation work. I, I did I mixed methods uh, research uh, study dissertation for my doctorate with all the upper echelon mem uh, members of the uh, Irish and Italian mob in Boston, Whitey Bulger's people. And they're retired and they were more than happy to work with me. And they've talked to students and blah, blah, blah. And we've had a good, very good working relationship for now for since 2009, you know, but that's another story. But here I am like, where do I go with this? You know, how do I, what am, you know, because they asked me, you know, hey, is this a, like a criminological thing, right? And I said, no, I, no, I don't want to do that. I, I just want to know how you live. You know what I mean? I just want to know why you, why you chose this life and what's important to you. OK, so when you're studying human behavior, the behaviors that be manifest themselves in some sort of activity that go that blows our mind, you know, something to call it crime or deviant behavior. What is like? What is that? Why did that happen? That's our job in criminal justice, social sciences, all that sort of thing. That's our job to find out why, because we're behind the scenes. We're toiling in the trenches, doing all the research to find out why this is happening and then bringing solutions, plural, to the table. All right. You know, um, and in a soundbite world, that's hard to do. You don't win a lot of awards and accolades for that because you're behind the scenes working on these things to try to solve these problems. That's our job. OK, um, I, I, and 
anything you see out there policy wise that has become something like, you know, a child advocacy group or, you know, an after school program, all those things are based upon research. Someone said, we know that we understand the behaviors of this group here and why they're doing something in theory. Our research supports it. So what we need to do is address, say, quote, the free time that these young people have between the hours of four and seven because they're undisciplined. And I got you get where I'm going with that. Right. OK. Um, so that's where I, I was a product of PAL in New York when I grew up, Police Athletic League. So when I came up here and took the job with Manchester PD in 1979, I, that, uh, the NYPD had laid off half the department. So I was like, uh-oh, I'm living in my mom and dad's basement for the rest of my life. I don't think so. So there was nothing going on back then. The economy was a mess. But I said, all right, so I took the job up here. And I stayed. I, I love that up here. I met my first wife. She gave me four kids in an hour and a half. So here I was, right? <laughs> so here I was, and I, I planted my roots here. And I'm glad. But what I was able to do was I recognized those problems that were addressed in New York by the PAL program. So I grabbed some of the guys and ladies that I work with, and we put a PAL pro program together here in Manchester back in 1990-91. And it's one of the largest not-for-profits um, you know, that serves hundreds of youth with different activities. But Based on research, we knew that without this, all right, based upon the data, right, you probably heard that before, you know, that they're getting into trouble because they don't have these adequate resources, family support, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So how do we fill that gap? And we have an obligation to do that as public servants. That's our job, ultimately, right? So this is what you're going towards. I know it's kind of like a lot of word salad, gobbledygook, all right? But again, I just want to reiterate, my job is to help you hone that problem down to a manageable proposal study, okay, at best. So let me go, Emily, what are you thinking about? What are you looking at studying or investigating, I should say? Probably close to home in um, the Department of Corrections on Valley Street um, okay. jail in Manchester. I didn't really know what my angle was. I was kind of hoping for this uh, meeting to like yep. broaden my horizons for that question. So that's awesome, you're doing a great job. <laughs> Well, I mean, yeah, so you're looking at behavior, right? Well, look at behavior and some of what, you know, we'll look at the why factor. You know, why do people do things they do? Oh, right. So if you're studying incarceration or whatever, you know, make a mess and send it to me. You know, I, I, I am a fan of writing and revising. OK, everybody. Now, a lot of your courses, you probably had a one shot deal and you hope for the best. Right. Set <laughs> it in on a Sunday night. And you ran out of there. We've all been there. That's not this course. I give you revision opportunities in the plural, all right, in, in, if you need them and if you want them, all right? Um, again, if you have any grammatical issues or spelling, we all have it, you know, it's just whatever. The writing center is great. So what I do is I do have kind of a an unwritten policy. It does work. If you do need help in the writing center and you want to have an opportunity to revise, you got to go there, okay? I do that, not for everybody. It's not It's not a, a mandate, but they're just wonderful. And I can't always get to every single little nuance, say if it's a grammatical or a formatting thing, okay? So don't, but they're wonderful. And if, if you've ever used them, they're phenomenal. Uh, and they've turned a lot of papers around. But get that support if you need it too, all right? Because I'm not passing the buck. I'm here to help you on that. No, no problem at all. So Emily, whatever you're thinking, write it down, throw it in an email, and I'll help refine it for you. Okay. And again, Sean, same thing. And Jennifer, what are you thinking about studying, investigating? <laughs> I don't know. All right, then. <laughs> <laughs> I, I haven't even had a chance to reach out to anybody yet. Our department is so shorthanded. We're working 18 hour shifts right now. So uh, I, that's it. Stop, stop right there. Life. Not a problem. All right. Let me ask you this. If there's one problem that bugs you, what is it? Mm, I, I just heard one. I just, all right, boom, stop right there. That's it. Stop right there. All right, I want you to write out a messy problem statement about that, okay? Do a little reading on the side, you know, retention issues. You know, go do a little research, all right? That'll give you some of the verbiage you're looking for and start, you know, uh, prime the pump and then send me your problem in an email, all right? And then I'll refine it. Okay. Okay. And let's go to Jerry. What are you looking to do? We'll look at investigate. This is this is actually the first day I've got to look over anything. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. I had to work like seven days a week. No, uh, no way. Months. Yeah. Yep. Been... I hear you. I know. I trust me. I get it. Yeah. Don't worry about it. All right. When when Thanks. you can, Jerry, just let me know what you're thinking about. Okay? okay. We can take something offline. Give me a phone call and we can we can brainstorm. Okay. Okay. All right. 
that's not a problem at all. All right, we'll play catch up. I don't want anybody. This is not a sprint. Take our time. All right. All right. I know you want to get the hell through the course. I can <laughs> just let me out of here. Right. I get that part. But you also want to get as much as you possibly can out of this course as possible, because I'm going to tell you right now, um, I'm going to say empirically half of the students that I've had in my research course, this course I've taught a number of times have come back, whether it's six months or right after or a couple, two, three years later and gone on for their master's and their PhDs. And they stayed in touch with me. It, it may happen for you. And so don't just, I know you're burnt out now. Maybe you're like, oh, please, what are you kidding me? You don't know that. Okay. You don't know. You might want to do that. So my job is to build that confidence in you that you can carry with you, save your work, portfolio it, right? Everything you do is excellent. You don't want to lose that. Just throw it away. Amanda, what are you thinking about? I'm not 100% sure. Um, I know I want to focus on veterans and the rates of recidivism. If I said okay. that right. I think I said okay. that right. All right. Same thing applies, Amanda. Start throwing stuff together. Again, I would always ask everybody, start doing a little bit of library research into your problem. You know, just a couple, two, three articles that may be related. It, it will prime the pump and open up some of your ideas a little bit. Okay. Right. Because there's no such thing as an original thought. <laughs> right. You know, there's no such thing as original problems. Our job is to help contribute recommendations. All right. A, sli a slice to the larger pie. That's what our job is to do. But again, this is about creating a strong research proposal while you're comfortable with all the components. So if somebody was to ask you to do it, you will and you can. OK, I always want you to understand this, too. Long, I, I, this is a cradle to grave relationship. I'm the associate dean of the criminal justice undergrad program here, here at Snow Global. And I've been here for 10 years. Prior to that, I was with Hesser College, owned by Kaplan. I was with Kaplan for a little bit. Prior to that, I was a police officer here for 23 years, and, and I retired in 2002. And I had carved out a, I, and I knew that there were limitations to the job, loved what I did. I think I made an impact and changed lives. Yeah, okay, great. Um, but I also knew, like you, all of you, I got to retool. You got to reinvent yourself. You really do. You always have to look for something better or something new, you know, otherwise you're kind of stagnant. And, you know, I was always definitely afraid of, you know, like mediocrity. I said, you know what, I, you know, I, if I've got something, I got to make the most out of it. Right. So I went back when my kid, I had four kids. I went back for my master's degree when they were seven months to six years old. And I was working details over time. I was going to school three quarter time. So I understand what you're going through. All right. And then later on, when I think when I when academia became a second career for me, I knew I, mean, I needed a doctorate. It was either that, you know, doctor or to die. Right. So uh, I went back to school. I was in the middle of a nasty divorce at the time. I was a chairman of a program. I mean, you know, I, you know, I said I asked God for strength and he just kept giving me weights to lift. I'm like, what are, what's going on? <laughs> OK, I get it. <laughs> right. So anyway, so I understand. Please, please know that. All right. I work for you. There's no ivory tower here or anything else like that. You're all bright people. You have a lot of compassion. You're in a great discipline. And um, and, and 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 we all lead with our heart. You know, compassion drives what we do. So, again, think about what you're doing. Make a mess. Send it to me in an email and then I'll help refine it and define it for you so you can come out of the gate smooth. So with that said, like any questions at all about the course, or I know that you're just poking around right now, ringing the bell on it, but if there's anything right now I can ask. And if not, that's fine. We can always, you know, you can always give me a call too. So anywhere, anyone, Emily, any questions at all about the course and whatnot? Well, I just want to say thank you, number one, because I've never, I've been here for three years. I've been in many different schools in Massachusetts mm -hmm. as well. Three yeah. colleges there. I yeah. have never had a professor I got to meet online actually hold something like this. It's wonderful. Um, I've yeah. always been tactile learner. I'm a vi very visually and I will send you that mess. Um, okay. <laughs> um, I have like a total of like seven different options you can to pick at. <laughs> right. Very good. Well, dovetailing from that, what I do is, I don't know if you ever heard of screencast. It's a it's a uh, a software asset where I video okay the expectations and I break them down. So when I post these announcements, please watch those. All right, because this gobbledygook language and expectations and rubrics like what what is that? A schematic to a Ferrari? What what do you want from me? <laughs> you know. So make sure you watch those breakdowns 
I've recycled them. So if there's a day like, you know, two years ago, forget it. But the application stays the same. I look to break it down and interpret it for you so you know you're very clear on the expectations for whatever it is. Okay, that makes sense. So make sure you do watch those, I, I, you know, and they're video based. Okay, so there's that. So good. Uh, anyone else? Jerry, you have any questions or concerns as, uh, right now or? Not, a, not right now. No. Okay. All right. I, Amanda, how about I you? Do have a, oh, oh, sorry. Go ahead, Emily. Yeah, no, go right ahead, Emily. Yeah. yeah. Um, just kind of my question is like how you said, like uh, toning down, gearing on perspective. Yeah. Um, how, what are some examples that we can both emotionally reflect on as well as research? Because yeah. I, I only have really one tie with law enforcement and um, I'm, yep. we no longer have that connection. So, yeah. How are you going to take back from the emotional aspect or the personal reflection rather? Well, I mean, that's the key. That's the that's the critical part of scholarly writing. All right. You are writing to inform, to teach and et cetera. OK, driven by your emotion. You know, emotion can bleed out into opinion. Right. And opinion can be OK because it can lead to the development of theory. OK, uh, and, and the development of a hypothesis, how would you prove it? What methods of research would you apply to divine it? So um, there's no doubt about it that your own feelings. My job is to make sure that if those things started to infect your writing and it becomes a conversational editorial, I said, we got to pull back and say, no, no. All right. You're here to teach somebody. You're here to inform. You're here to change You make problem. Recommend. You see what I'm saying? But that's a great question. Great question. And it really infects us all. There's no question about it. All right. Absolutely. 100 percent. Sean, any questions? You're tackling a pretty big thing there. That's for sure. That is for sure. Mm, no, not yet. We'll just okay. uh, we'll yep. do a lot of, yep. a, lot of Take emails, a, lot of, a lot of the emails uh, with my SME <laughs> and with you and just kind of bounce things off you guys. And OK, you got here, it. All right. we're, we're, we're focusing more on the technology aspect. So he said, uh, can we right. take a look at um, ballistic film for for uh, windows in schools, that sort of thing. So mm -hmm. I, I kind of said, you know, we could look at um, different technologies, affordable, some not affordable, depending on the facilities and so forth. And he threw right. out there, he said, well, let's look at something like ballistic film, which is affordable for everybody. Um, okay. So yeah, I'll just be bouncing ideas and concepts um, off of both of you guys and then getting your feedback and then kind of focusing my research based on what yep. uh, what he kind of has in mind. Um, That's great. Yeah, you're wrestling with quite a lot. There's no question about it. You could go in a lot of different, different directions. But let me know because I'm on the sidelines with the whistle. I'll, I'll help tame the beast. Okay. All right. Because I know you're in good hands with God. There's no question about it. You know, but it, it, there's, there's a lot there. And that's with everybody. It's a lot. There's a lot. And so my job is to help reduce your stress levels to as low as possible, because when you're stressed out, the research shows that you won't do a good job. That's what happens. You know, you just race through and say, oh, the hell with it, you know, whatever, you know, it ends up in copy paste. And it just, I get it. But when you're, like I said, I work with you individually. All right. So I just want to let you know, you know, eight weeks is not necessarily eight weeks. Okay. You know, so if you're on to, I'll give you an like just hypothetically, Sean, you're on to something, you are developing a bang up research project. You want to finish that research project, but we're getting close to eight week. Well, if you have completed, say, 70% of the coursework by stipulation and policy of the registrar's office, I will give you an incomplete so you can continue. All right. That goes for everybody here. I know you don't want it incomplete. No one wants that. But the option, I leave that on the table. All right. So you can have something you can carry with you. We've had people who've done um, these research projects and have gotten a job. They've also done research projects that were actually taken and implemented by the agency they were working with. And it doesn't, and for everybody, it's not necessarily all police agencies, all right? It could be human services, anything that's about our system. Our system is huge, right? It's advocacy, it's court people, it's corrections, it's all that. You know, you know, it's tactical, it's huge. But again, at the end of the day, it's about human behavior. Why do they do these things they did do? And what's what's been our approach, all that sort of thing. So I'll stop with the word salad. So, Jerry, anything at all? I mean, everybody okay right now? Yeah, okay. I'm good. Oh, okay, all right, all right. So, with that said, um, I'll let you guys all go. Any, If there's any last-minute questions or comments, just fire away now. If not, again, this. 
All right. Now, just let you know, I'm on the East Coast. So if I miss your call at three in the morning, well, whatever, I'll call you back. But if you do leave a message, if I missed your call, leave me a good day and time or even whatever to call you back. All right. So we're not so I know when to get back to you as fast as I possibly can. All right. And I, I try to get to everybody's work as quickly as I can, et cetera. But again, I work with everyone individually. I also will send out exemplars of past work that was that doesn't even have to write like doesn't again everybody's going to do something a little bit different this is not cookie cutter trust me so I, I use exemplars for your aha moments okay that's how that person that student did it uh, that kind of thing all right so i try to grease the wheels make this as a smooth a course as i possibly can for you but to get the most out of it okay so that's where we're at all right with that said i'll send the recording out to everyone in case you missed anything and uh keep those cards and letters going and um everyone be safe Take a deep breath. I've got your back. All right. All right. And I Thanks, mean Doc. That. No, no, no. We're good. We're good. I work for you. Don't there's no other there's no ivory tower here. We will do this again. Okay. We'll get I'll throw these out again. These asynchronous meetings on teams. These work really, really well. It's nice to get it get together, see everybody too, you know. Um, so with that said, I'll let everybody go. I'll shut it down. Have a great night. Take a deep breath, and I'll be watching for your problem statements in whatever form they look like just send them on <laughs> you're laughing huh jen i was like oh wait he's in for it <laughs> it could be a nightmare on that midnight three o'clock in the morning when you're trying to type something out <laughs> I've been there, done that. I was, I was through. Now I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm out of my mind. I'm in the MFA program here. It's new, you know. So right after this thing, I've got to post in a discussion board of this English grad class. You know, so I don't know why I'm doing that to me. I would rather be downstairs playing Madden 22. And, Just released. Yeah, you know what I mean. It is. It's my way. What's wrong with you? You don't understand. This is like a narcotic for me. Okay. I need to do this now, okay? <laughs> and just you know, and no one gets hurt. Just back away, <laughs> right? It's, it's been it's been scientifically proven that Madden is an endorphin engine. Thank you. I will live by that. You're absolutely right. You know what? I, I yeah, I'm 64 years old. I will never grow up. People say, "Why don't you act your age?" I go, "I don't know. I can't. I don't know. I've never been this age before." <laughs> right? So anyway. All right. Blessings, everybody. Have a great evening. We will talk. We'll stay in touch. Stay in touch with me, okay? Mm -hmm. All right, everybody. Have a great night. Good night.